In the last few lectures, we completed cyclicity of unit digit and now we will start a new topic which is remainder theorem. Remainder theorem is an important theorem and it is used to find out the remainder of a division which we cannot perform easily. Sometimes we have to divide a number by another number and the division is not so easy to perform. In such cases, we can use the remainder theorem to find out the remainder. I will list down few typical cases in which we use remainder theorem. The first case is when two or more numbers are multiplied together and then they are divided by another number. This type of division is not so simple. So we use remainder theorem to find out the remainder. The second case is when two or more numbers are added together and then divided by another number. Again, we use remainder theorem to find the remainder. And the third case we have to discuss is when a number is having a large power, let's say n, and then divided by another number. So n is a large power and as a is an integer, you will have a large number in the numerator. So dividing it by m and finding out the remainder is not an easy task. And to make it easy, we will use remainder theorem. I will explain remainder theorem by the help of one question. You can see the question on your screen. In this question, we need to find the remainder when 17 multiplied by 21 is divided by 12. So we need to find out the remainder when 17 multiplied by 21 is divided by a number 12. And if you see this, you will find it is of first kind. We have two numbers multiplied together and then they are divided by another number. I can write 17 as 12 plus 5 and I can write 21 as 12 plus 9 and they are divided by 12. You can see I have broken 17 as 12 plus 5 because 12 is the number by which we have to divide the numerator. And again I have broken 21 like 12 plus 9 because 12 is the number by which we have to divide. So this is first thing we can do and now I will open these two brackets. It will give me 12 multiplied by 12 plus 12 multiplied by 9 plus 5 multiplied by 12 plus 5 multiplied by 9 and they are divided by 12. While solving the problems, you don't have to perform this step. This is only for explanation purpose. We are trying to obtain a final result which we will use directly while solving the problems. I can also write this as 12 multiplied by 12 divided by 12 plus 12 multiplied by 9 divided by 12 plus 5 multiplied by 12 divided by 12 plus 5 multiplied by 9 divided by 12. If you see the first term, you will find the remainder is equal to 0 because 12 multiplied by 12 when divided by 12 is a perfect division and there is no remainder left. So in this case, the remainder is equal to 0. In this case also, the remainder is equal to 0 because 12 and 12 will cancel out. Here also, the remainder is equal to 0. But in the last case, 5 multiplied by 9, we cannot perfectly divide by 12. So the remainder is not equal to 0. So we can say that the remainder when 17 multiplied by 21 is divided by 12 will only depend on the last term. The last term is this one. So the remainder of this depends only on the last term and uh, the remainder will be same as the remainder of this last term. I hope you can understand this. The remainder of 17 multiplied by 21 when divided by 12 is same as the remainder when 5 multiplied by 9 is divided by 12. So simply we have to find out the remainder of this last term and it will be our answer. Now how we obtained this last term? This last term is nothing but the remainder when 17 is divided by 12 and when 21 is divided by 12 individually. Let's try to understand how we obtained this last term. When you divide 17 by 12, you will get the remainder 5 
and when you divide 21 by 12 you will get the remainder 9 and as 17 and 21 are multiplied with each other we will also multiply the remainders so 5 multiplied by 9 and 17 multiplied by 21 is divided by 12 so we will divide the multiplied remainders by 12 and this will be equal to 45 divided by 12 and you can easily perform the division now you will get the remainder equal to 9 so 9 is the answer the remainder the remainder is equal to 9 so I hope this process is clear to you this was only for explanation purpose the only thing you have to remember is simply obtain the individual remainders multiply them and then perform the division to get the remainder this will be more clear when we will solve the next example the next example will clear all your questions in this example we need to find out the remainder when 15 multiplied by 17 multiplied by 19 is divided by 7 so what we will do we will first find out the remainder when 15 is divided by 7 15 divided by 7 will give us the remainder equal to 1 then we will divide 17 by 7 17 by 7 to get the remainder and it will be equal to 3 after this we will divide the last number which is 19 by 7 19 by 7 to get the remainder and it is equal to 5 we have 1 3 and 5 we will multiply them together and then divide them by 7 this is equal to 15 divided by 7 and the remainder in this case is equal to 1 the remainder is equal to 1 because 7 multiplied by 2 is 14 and 15 minus 14 is equal to 1 so 1 is the answer this will also have the remainder equal to 1 so I hope this process is clear to you now we will move to the homework problems I have three homework problems for you and you have to tell me the answer in all the three cases the first homework problem is based on the first case the first case is when two or more numbers are multiplied together and divided by another number the two numbers which are multiplied together are 14 and 15 and they are divided by 8 you need to tell me the remainder in the second problem find the remainder when three numbers 75 78 and 57 are multiplied together and divided by number 34 and in the third problem in the third problem three numbers are there 75 78 and 57 and now they are added together instead of multiplication like in problem 2 they are added together and they are again divided by the same number which is 34 tell me the remainder so this is all for this lecture try to solve these three problems and if you have any doubt regarding the remainder theorem you can definitely ask in comment section in the coming presentations we will discuss few more topics related to remainder theorem